what's happening right in front of our face. And China is now involved as the ones that are going to lead in the information technology development when it comes to quantum communications. And so here we have it. It's there. The security systems are going to increase, which means there's going to be more lockdown of the Internet eventually as these things begin to progress. If there is a global quantum communications network and everybody is on it, right, not just on their devices, but perhaps with wearable technologies and worse yet, implantable technologies, which is already here. It's going to become more and more common as the years go by, as the shock value of culture to resist those things will fade. And, you know, the millennial generation and the generation coming after it accept some of these infiltrating technologies. We will see a serious global brain system where people are bought into this ideology, bought into this new world order system, economically, spiritually, institutionally, politically, this is the mark of the beast system being set up right before our eyes. They even say right there that with growing concerns with the government and military and financial networks becoming a prime target for espionage, well, come to the quantum communications network where everything is secure. If you really want to communicate on the internet safely, securely, if you want to buy and sell safely, securely, you're going to have to go on the quantum communications network. But what is going to be the price to pay for that? Perhaps it is what the Bible calls the mark of the beast in order to participate in this new economic, political, and ultimately spiritual system. So interesting story here about quantum computing, which ties to all the stuff we've been discussing with CERN and everything else. In connection to space, which I think there's a huge connection that people are missing or dismissing because they believe in the flat earth of the dome and they just don't even look at this stuff. But it's what's happening right before our eyes, or at least what they're telling us is happening. And either way, they're setting up a communication system that is going to encompass the globe, regardless of what you think. is. Okay, so I had more or less promised to myself that I wouldn't do any more videos that were some kind of response to my brother Gans from Face Like the Sun channel. But then I heard this very interesting piece he did last week talking about how China supposedly launched a satellite which uses quantum communication technology. And, and of course, the specific segment I just played uh, where he mentions the flat earth and the sort of suggestion that people who are believing in a stationary enclosed cosmology are more likely to be distracted from or uninterested in the kinds of rapid advancements we're seeing right now within the whole realm of quantum computing and all the ramifications that it has with things like CERN and spiritual dimensions and portals and etc. So not only do I of course think this is a poorly made assumption which needs to be addressed but this actually kind of serves as a perfect segue into something that I've been thinking about for some time now but haven't quite been sure how to how to delve into it until now so let's just state for the record that for <laughs> for Gons if he ever does one day happen to see this and for anyone else harboring similar sentiments no it is not true that enclosed cosmology diminishes the importance of uh, researching things like quantum computing or CERN and D-Wave and how all of these things factor into the coming beast system in fact nothing could be further from the truth If anything, enclosed biblical cosmology shines light on all these elements to a degree that honestly is quite staggering, and it really pulls it all together in a way that the majority of so-called prophecy experts and watchmen uh, can't seem to fathom. Uh, as we hear Gans basically express here, the, the assumption is that without the vastness of outer space and without gravitational theory and Einsteinian physics and atomic theory and all that uh, being the realities behind things like CERN, then you know, somehow there's, there, there's, they imagine that there's some sort of massive intellectual vacuum and that essentially all those dark technologies couldn't even be doing anything in the first place, so that's... So therein lies the, the whole logical breakdown. Um, I mean, really, so many people still cling to these theoretical concepts of quantum mechanics because they just can't yet seem to imagine that the bulk of atomic theory might actually just be as much of a farcical description of reality as ev evolution is of biological processes. 
But, I mean, just like a scientist who completely believes in a false theoretical framework of biological evolution can still work in a lab tinkering with gen genetic experimentation and achieving various tangible results, so too can scientists who are entrenched within false Newtonian and Einsteinian paradigms still tinker with realities uh, that they themselves do not comprehend on a quantum scale. And the interesting thing is that this is already what researchers like Anthony Patch and so many others out there now who recognize that CERN absolutely has to have some kind of nefarious spiritual agenda to it already, they already acknowledge this on a certain level. You know, tons of people already now can consider the likelihood that the purpose of such technologies go far beyond their officially stated explanations. But for those of us who now for some time have been seriously examining the, the many offshoot topics of investigation relating to enclosed cosmology, we're becoming more and more aware of just how much all the evidence really does increasingly point to the centrality of concepts like cymatics and frequency and electromagnetism and such. And the more, the more we apply these sorts of cymatic lenses to topics such as the quote heavens, i.e. the higher spiritual dimensions, but also incorporating all that we see with our naked eyes in the, the starry skies above, then <laughs> it really just becomes very interesting indeed. And of course, biblically, we really do see an enormous amount of interrelation between the, the physical sky canopy above us and the unseen spiritual realm of the, quote, second heaven. And in enclosed cosmology, this really makes so much more sense than it does when attempted to be shoved into a heliocentric Copernican model, so... Essentially, in lieu of the materialistic evolutionary concept of outer space, what we have instead is the concept that's typically referred to in New Age circles as the astral realms, right? But then once we start to add to the puzzle certain things that we understand to be true from the occult side, uh, from the fallen angel side, such as these ideas about there actually being in existence within the astral realms, uh, massive like libraries, storehouses of information, such as the renowned Akashic records and things, and that these sorts of things exist in the demonically ruled spiritual planes whereby they can manifest and create any environment and have any appearance which they themselves wish to take on and, and so basically in the end it really is just like the matrix or you know the holodeck from star trek only <laughs> somehow they're using the quote technology of the second heaven itself uh, to use the quantum scale cymatic frequency manipulation to further their millennia-old agenda of spiritual deception. So, what does this have to do with things like D-Wave and CERN and the Mark of the Beast system? Well, honestly, it's, it's pretty simple when you stop and look at it all, but it's also pretty darn creepy. Uh, especially when you stop and think about these things as they relate to a phrase like <laughs> cloud computing. Because if these pieces really do all fit together in the way that I'm describing, then honestly that little metaphorical catchphrase suddenly takes on a, a whole new dimension. <laughs> I, mean, I mean literally new dimension. Uh, we all of course use this term nowadays to describe you know, saving data in the cloud, which really just means your data is being stored on some corporate server somewhere instead of your personal device or computer. but. But through this lens of cymatic quantum computing, suddenly the cloud is is possibly almost literally the clouds. It's, it's really that astral plane we're talking about, the spiritual dimension currently being manipulated and used by the fallen ones, uh, you know, which various students of mystery, religions, and occultism have been, have already been accessing in various ways basically ever since the days of Nimrod and the founding of Babylon itself. So, in a way, the spiritual realm becomes the server. You 
in now we're facing this prospect of this spiritual realm, this this dimensional plane, and, and the fallen beings who reside there uh, being accessed through quantum computers. And eventually, it would seem, it's all leading to a completely quantum integrated communication system. Uh, basically, a quantum internet, which then, of course, will also eventually be integrated with immersive VR type technology, you know, um, implants and the whole transhumanism angle and, and you know perhaps some sort of quantum internet of everything and so when we connect that to the ideas of a mark of the beast system where everyone is required to take the mark and perhaps be uploaded into this where you are constantly in connection with not just a physical technological system like we conceive of it now but where the that technology ultimately interfaces with the demonic realm with the second heaven um, whereby people who are embracing it are basically believing that they have taken this quantum leap that they have achieved a new level of humanity that they have they are able to i mean think about it it's basically it's you know it would have all the promises of occult power and enlightenment and being becoming one with the cosmos and one with all the rest of humanity and just having superhuman like mental power and ability to travel you know it'd be like but all through but for the masses for for everyone and it would just become no everyone is you know everyone's a jedi everyone's part of the hive mind everyone's jacked in to to the to the new matrix everyone gets to be neo yeah so it's so so again this is not a new idea but it sort of just takes on a new twist or a new depth when I think you think of it through these through these perspectives so yeah does flat earth and enclosed cosmology de detract from that sort of research I, I would say absolutely not um, it just simply reveals even more about where all, all of this is heading so thank you love the movie The Matrix and the holodeck and the question is when will we be able to enter a room and create this imaginary scenario so realistic that it seems as if we're really there. It turns out that we scientists are making progress in that direction even as we speak. Now think about this, if you have internet contact lenses then you can imagine and conjure up different kinds of bizarre universes just like in The Matrix. You can be thrust into an alien environment. You can have shootouts with aliens. You can have all sorts of wondrous things take place inside your contact lens. But then the trick is, what happens if you move? What happens if you touch things? Well, the military has constructed something to communicate on the internet safely, securely, if you want to buy and sell safely, securely, you're going to have to go on the Quantum Communications Network. But what is going to be the price to pay for that? Perhaps it is 
what the Bible calls the mark of the beast in order to participate in this new economic, political, and ultimately spiritual system. So interesting story here about quantum computing, which ties to all the stuff we've been discussing with CERN and everything else. The security systems are going to increase, which means there's going to be more lockdown of the internet eventually as these things begin to progress. If there is a global quantum communications network and everybody is on it, right? Not just on their devices, but perhaps with wearable technologies and worse yet, implantable technologies, which is already here. It's going to become more and more common as the years go by, as the shock value of culture to resist those things will fade. And, you know, the millennial generation and the generation coming after it accept some of these infiltrating technologies. We will see a serious global brain system where people are bought into this ideology, bought into this new world order system, economically, spiritually, institutionally, politically, this is the mark of the beast system being set up right before our eyes. They even say right there that with growing concerns with the government and military and financial networks becoming a prime target for espionage, well, come to the quantum communications network where everything is secure. In connection to space, which I think there's a huge connection that people are missing or dismissing because they believe in the flat earth of the dome and they just don't even look at this stuff, but it's what's happening right before our eyes, or at least what they're telling us is happening. And either way, they're setting up a communication system that is going to encompass the globe, regardless of what you think. is. Okay, so I had more or less promised to myself that I wouldn't do any more videos that were some kind of response. right in front of our face and china is now involved as the ones that are going to lead in the information technology development when it comes to quantum communications and so here we have it it's there